there we go. Uh, three, two, and one. Well, Ryan, uh, welcome back on this beautiful uh, Friday here for Mayor's Monday at WSAU, WSAU.com as well. Uh, been a couple of months since we've talked to you, so uh, how's the office uh, fitting you these days? Is it, uh, is it fitting you a little better these days? Yeah, it's an excellent place to work. Uh, I enjoy it so far, and I'm excited to see what the future holds. Yeah, and uh, obviously for a lot of you in this area, uh, the future holds a lot of PFAS discussion. Um, I'm sure you've probably had discussions with Mayor Katie. She says her life is nothing but water <laughs> these days, uh, and a couple of, other, couple of your contemporaries as well. So... Uh, where are we at on the PFAS discussions uh, here at, in Rothschild? Because obviously you're a municipality that's founded as well. Right. Yeah, so currently uh, the village of Rothschild is still working through the development stages. So uh, what that means for Rothschild is working through the design phase. Uh, roughly, I would say about three months ago, uh, the village of Rothschild Water Commission approved the village of Rothschild to spend $300,000 on the uh, the plan, the initial design plan with Becker Hoppy. Uh, so far, we're working through those uh, processes right now. Uh, and actually, just as of last week, uh, we're working with the state of Wisconsin uh, seeking out grants uh, for to, to help cost share and offset the cost because it is going to be a potentially um, large expense uh, on our behalf, right. um, but certainly one that's well warranted. Uh, so, yes, we're working through those design uh hip cups in, in kind of stages right now. And then going forward, uh, the plan is to still, in the next two to three years, have that facility up and running. And this is a unique situation as well, because we're talking about a facility that's specially designed solely for the purpose of removing PFAS. So this would essentially be in addition uh, to your current water treatment uh, facility. That is correct. This, this facility would be a standalone uh, facility in addition to what we currently have. Uh, and this facility actually is being built out in two phases. Uh, the first phase is going to handle the PFAS uh, filtering, so through potentially the reverse osmosis uh, system. And the second one is building it out for our chloride levels. In the village of Rothschild, our chloride levels are a little higher than, than the average, so we're building this facility to actually handle both. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you mentioned grant funding, funding from other sources to the state. This is something that's been uh, on the minds of uh, everybody here over the last uh, couple of years. What are you finding uh, is available for you in that phase? Yeah, so we're working with uh, Tammy Baldwin right now in her office, uh, trying to figure out where those avenues are and what we can apply for. And Becker Hobby has been uh, great in helping us find different avenues for revenue or potential revenue sources uh, to offset the costs. So we haven't officially applied to any grants yet. Uh, but we're doing the actual applications currently. And, and you're finding, a, again, by going through the state, I'm sure that you're not the only ones that are looking for, for this funding. So I'm sure uh, when you hear things like uh, what was announced a few weeks ago, billions for clean water, that's got to be something that, uh, that you're saying as Mary Katie Rosenberg would say, put us to the front of the line for that. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, that, that's kind of the goal here is uh, trying to create a facility that, number one, stands out in a positive realm uh, to showcase how the, the water treatment here for the village of Rothschild and certainly potentially beyond uh, and servicing potentially other communities that may uh, hook up to it. Uh, but that, that is what's on our forefront is making sure that that water is, uh, you know, something that the residents enjoy, something that's healthy for them. Um, and, and really what that means going through the grant process is trying to find the avenues and the resources that can help offset those costs, but do so in, in a um, mindful way so that yes, we can stand out in a different realm. So, you know, offering the chloride levels and taking kind of care of two different items with one approach uh, is kind of what we're hoping to, to see and hoping to uh, strive forward with. Absolutely, and then uh, of course, Residents that are hearing this want to know as well what this is going to do uh, impacting their pocketbooks But uh, it sounds like you're still maybe two or three years away from knowing exactly uh, What that's going to do correct. Yes, there, there has been preliminary projections But really no solidified numbers will likely be out until our design is complete um, So we're hoping late likely later this year 2023 would have a better understanding of what that looks like uh, for the residents but again obviously the residents two things are in mind for us number one their health uh, and number two the pocketbook just like you mentioned so figuring out a way that 
we can you know apply for these grants and cost share to drive that cost down so that it's not such a a shock to the residents yes indeed because as a as a water rate payer in wausau i can tell you that there is a shock sometimes that's associated with this but again as, as you said uh this is a health factor i know some people have kind of turned it into you know a one side versus other uh debate but at the end of the day, everybody's gonna be drinking this water, some people for a long period of time. And we do know that once these chemicals build up, you know, it, it, cannot, it can be detrimental to your health. Yes, correct. So we'll look forward to seeing where that uh, ends up going over the next uh, few months. And of course, uh, covering that as well. Uh, but something uh, on the fun side with water, you've got the Municipal Aquatic Center that it, it seems like this is early to be talking about, but you're already talking about getting it ready for the upcoming year. Uh, what what all is going to be going into that? Yeah, so we're, we're excited. Uh, I would think in about a month and a half, we should be opening right towards the end of May here. Uh, we're excited this year. We're trying to uh, do some updates to our concession stand, uh, try to bring in some different uh, appliances that could hopefully uh, be more advantageous for families and birthday parties that are coming there. Uh, to have a better food selection and a quicker turnaround on the food itself. Um, and, and again, the birthdays is gonna be huge for us. So we're actually gonna try to create a, uh, a working spreadsheet on our end so that uh, individuals, they can rent out certain portions of the pool uh, on the deck. And so when birthday parties are had, it's a much more uh, efficient process. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we're, we're excited. I think uh, we're gonna try a soft approach this year with it and ease into it, see how it goes and then we may see some more capital improvement uh, plans or projects that are gonna happen in 2024 with the pool. Yeah, and the unique thing about this facility is it is a shared facility between yourselves and the city of Schofield. So uh, working with leaders in Schofield on these uh, improvements has to be uh, maybe a bit of a challenge for you, but it's also gotta be some enjoyable work as well. Absolutely, yeah, we're excited. Um, I would encourage everybody to come on out and. I think by uh, certainly the, the middle of June, we'll, you'll definitely see some changes there and beyond. So we're excited and we're happy to have everybody there. Yeah, so uh, any, any new um, water fixtures or water uh, toys or things like that uh, gonna be on the horizon as well? <laughs> yeah, this year they are adding one uh, new water feature. Um, it's, a, uh, it's, it's kind of a, a long tubular uh, water feature that stands maybe eight, 10 feet in the air and it will shoot water out in different kind of directions. So uh, that has been ordered and it's actually being shipped currently. Any Amazon one day rush, two day rush on no, that? No, no, sure? unfortunately not. <laughs> You're sure? No, no free shipping with Prime on something like that. No, no, a little too big. A little too big, okay. So yeah, I, I always I always like to throw that in when we're talking about shipping things, you know. Sure. You know, things like, like you see, you're telling me that a stoplight can't be sent via Amazon Prime, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, the uh, that's one of the things that we do like to talk about here is the fun things as well. Uh, before we let you go, though, one more thing: um, big road construction project coming up, and this is actually another joint uh, project for you with uh, with your neighbors as well in Weston. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, so uh, the village of Weston, the village of Rothschild, are doing a joint project. Uh, at the intersection of Weston Avenue and Alderson. Uh, what that's gonna look like is right now it's scheduled to be a 2024 project, uh, likely the summer into the fall of 2024, so we're just over a year out yet. Uh, but it is gonna be a large project, uh, but one that needs some necessary upgrades to the area. Uh, right now the project is asking for a proposal to have a mini roundabout there. Um, so instead of the current four-way intersection, this would be a mini roundabout uh, that would offer hopefully a, a higher level of efficiency in traffic, mm -hmm. especially at peak times, safer for school and things of that sort. Yeah, and I know one of the advantages uh, of a roundabout, and anybody who's ever driven through New Prague, Minnesota knows you can't go through one end of that town to the other without seeing five or six of them. I know sure. they give anxiety to some people, but uh, what people do end up noticing is when you, once you get used to them, traffic continues to move and you're never really at a complete stop. Correct. So is that one of the biggest advantages that you're looking for then in that yeah, area? Yeah, really traffic flow um, and to minimize the high density of traffic that happens during, you know, in the morning rush hour per se going to school and then that to and from school in the evening, uh, whether it be for sporting events or just school itself letting out, uh, there is quite the traffic backup. Uh, so what we're hoping to uh, 
the goal from this is really hoping to find a way that uh, efficient traffic flows can go through that intersection at a reasonable uh, speed and a reasonable amount of time so that there's not uh, congestion. Yeah, and then uh, at either end of the project, then I'm guessing you've got a pretty significant uh, reconstruct for this uh, stretch of road as well, correct? Yes, so uh, the actual intersection, yes, again, of, of Alderson and Weston will be uh, potentially the mini roundabout. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from Birch Street and the village of Weston all the way going west to Alderson is also going to be redone. Um, and that is going to, uh, a portion of that will actually have curb and gutter. Um, and same with all the intersection directions. So northeast, south, and west there will have small portions of curb and gutter uh, around that. Um, so what that means as well is there will be some updated walking trails slash sidewalk paths in that area uh, for a more safer uh, movability for pedestrians, whether they are biking, walking, you name it. Mm -hmm. So we're excited. Yeah, so then how do you uh, collaborate then with the Village of Weston on a project like this? Because obviously we all know road work is not cheap, especially if you're going to reconstruct an entire intersection and things like that. Uh, what stage are these discussions at with the Village of Weston and when will we know uh, for sure how this project is moving forward? Uh, the project is certainly moving forward on, in both communities. Uh, we're at about 60% design phase already, uh, which is well underway. Um, so what that means for the Village of Weston and the Village of Rothschild is currently uh, making sure that all the kind of fine tuning of details for the four uh, homes that are impacted by this, or I should say three homes in one field that are impacted by this uh, intersection, um, figuring out land acquisition and those sorts of things is kind of the next phase here. Uh, also, you know, it, what the community has to remember is this is a, a project that was kind of pushed forward from the state of Wisconsin as well. So there are some state funds that are being offered, uh, just over $733,000 are being shared between the Village of Weston and the Village of Rothschild to complete this project. So uh, we're excited to work with the Village of Weston and, and make it work. And then uh, as far as you know, working and collaborating with your other leaders in the community, how are you finding that uh, that, that works? Because obviously you being new, uh, to the position that's got to be kind of an advantage uh, for you as well yeah and you know the, the municipal leaders whether city town or, or village in this area even even county um, i've had the pleasure of meeting uh, all of them um, and they've all been wonderful to work with so far uh, they're very uh, they've welcomed me with open arms so i'm very appreciative of that uh, and a lot of them definitely have experience in areas that you know i have not had in the past because i came from county uh, mm -hmm. government um, so yeah, it's been a, it's been an excellent experience so far, and I'm excited to keep moving forward with them. And lastly, you yourself, uh, what side of the roundabout debate are you on? Are they good or are they bad, and they need to die off? <laughs> uh, you know, roundabouts certainly offer a, a unique uh, asset to a village, mm -hmm. or really to a city, or really anywhere. Um, we're excited to potentially have this intersection flow better. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's what our engineers are, are going towards, and that's kind of what. The village of Weston, I know ourselves are hoping to have. So, I think if it if it comes down to the traffic wise and, and that easeability for our residents, the village of Weston residents and beyond that that use this area, that's where we're we're excited to offer that uh, that help. Yeah, and I just know that that is a very hot button issue among people at sure. times. But uh, sure. but yeah, again, for somebody like you, you've got to take a step back and, and, and kind of look at the bigger picture. Correct. Yeah, yeah. and so looking at the bigger picture is really just again. You know, it's uh, understanding that roundabouts, you know, certainly from an engineering standpoint, offer that, that feasibility and efficiency uh, for vehicles and pedestrians to go through. And, you know, that's really at the end of the day what matters. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate the time. We'll look forward to chatting again uh, sometime in the near future. Excellent. Thank you.